Now Word, oh, it's wonderful. You might have noticed as you're editing, and you're typing along, you're typing away, and you notice you have this floating little toolbar. All of a sudden, you have this little thing that turned on, and it has bold and has some of the most popular formatting commands. You needed it. And it's almost as if Word read your mind. It's do-it-yourself, folks, and it gives you a fourth way of accessing some of those popular formatting bars while you're writing. It will appear and reappear as you need it. It's handy. For sure, it's quick. It gives you a chance to edit on the fly. You can use the ribbon if you'd like. It's just another way of formatting. Now, for those of you, and I'm one of these, I actually don't like it very much. It gets in my way. I'm one of those fast, messy typers. If you don't like it, you can turn that off on, again, the Office button, Word Options, right there on the popular tool. It's called Mini Toolbar. If you click to uncheck it, you can go ahead and turn that off. Handy, though, and remember, you have the, the most popular tools right here for you, including the Home tab. Now, deeper dive on the ribbon. What else does it have? What am I looking for? Well, left to right, you start with the home tab. 90% of the time will be spent here writing, formatting, getting it to look good. The next step, of course, is you're adding. You're selling. You're enhancing. Now, studies will show the more you add and gain attention through pictures, through charts, they tell a thousand words. People will look at that. It increases your direct response. For those of you in marketing, you know that already. For those of you new to the publishing world, or perhaps you've been given a task to put a flyer out there using your Word tools, wow, you've got a great suite of tools to do that. Use the Insert tab and explore that as we're looking at this. Page layout. This is a big change from 03, folks. This used to be found on the file menu. If you click on your page layout tab, very important that you get your page set up. Is it formatted for landscape or portrait? Your orientation tools, your margin tools are found here. Very important for making sure that you have your document looking as good as it is written here in formatting world. You'll also find some themes hanging out there. That's a wonderful branding option that you can brand or design your Word document with colors and fonts and package that up so that it matches your PowerPoint and your Excel theme. How powerful. You don't have to spend time now editing text blocks and changing each slide and each text block and then coming back into Word and realizing you used the wrong font. For sales and business development teams, this is a must. Put your best foot forward with this. Use the tools that are here. Pick the designs. It's a click and a pick. You can customize that. For our branding teams, you can make sure they're using your font styles, and you can customize any part of that for you. Now, here's a quick, this is a quick nit for me. This is one thing I don't like about Word. Some of you might have noticed that the default paragraph settings have changed for Word. And I, again, if you've been wrestling with this, the buttons you're going to want to look at for changing that. They added six points of space before and after paragraphs. What you'll find is if you open up an old document into the new format and save it, documents that used to fit nicely on one page don't fit there. They, they, they scroll to two pages. You must look at them before you send them to the printer. If, you, if you're using this new office package, make sure you're reviewing that. You'll need to select all of your text. You can change the default for that by clicking on the paragraph launcher arrow, but be aware of that. And for those of you translating and doing bilingual pieces, be careful that adds even more space requirements for your Spanish or your Portuguese or Polish translation copies. Please edit that, look at it. I promise you, if you bring it into 07, your pagination will change. So be careful of that. Okay, just a quick FYI. Let's keep going. References. Oh, for our engineers and for our writers and our publishing groups, wow, do we have some wonderful tools here. I'll talk about these a little bit later. But the reference tools give us the bibliography tools for documenting, making sure you've annotated your sources. We've done some wonderful, wonderful training sessions with groups of writers and marketers that in three hours, they literally said we saved them hundreds of hours with these new teams. For those of you publishing out to the editorial world, 
I promise you, if you spend a little bit of time in this section, it will save you time and money in getting your pieces, your publications, whether it's to a journal, to the New York Times, or out to Harper and Row, you will save bundles of time with this investment. Mailings, let's go to the next tab. For those of you doing mail merge, my apologies, it's tough. But I have to tell you it's gotten a little bit easier. We're going to look at that a little bit later. We'll do a deep dive for you. But for those of you using merge, I promise the ribbon gives you more functionality. It gives you an option to use the O3 menu if you want. But take a look at that. I think you're going to like some of the enhancements they've made to mailings and some quick checks that you can audit to make sure that that mailing has been set up. Remember, for those nonprofits on the phone, for those foundations, those development folks using this to raise money, we're only as good as our worst typo in that mailing. Let's make sure that we use the new tools, not only for creating the letter, but remember the tools to hook that data source to your document have also improved. For those of you who have been afraid to use this and have been doing it one by one, I have to challenge you, try it. It's gotten so much easier, and you don't have to be a Word advanced power user to use these features. Next, let's click on the Review tab. Those of you will recognize that's where spell check is hiding. Now, I have to throw this out. Um, some of us are power users. We love our keyboard. We like our shortcuts. For those of you using the spelling tool, if you like to click on F7, as an example, and I know someone's going to test me. So go ahead and test it. It works. So even though we have all of these new commands for 2007, you will still be able to use the keyboard shortcuts for help, for spelling, for bold, for underlining, clipboard, anything. Those still work, folks. They haven't changed those much. In fact, all they've done is add to the complement of commands you can use. Finally, we're going to look at the View tab. This changes the way your window and your pages look and feel. For those of you using macros, I know I have a few power users out there in our audience, you can also find macros hiding way over to the right, the very last group you'll find. It's hiding there. That's consistent for every application within the Office suite. Next, oh, the tools. Oh, I love these. This is my eye candy. And for those marketers you're and PR folks, you're kind of rubbing your hands saying, wow. And yes, they've expanded the color suites. They've expanded the themes. There are more galleries for everything, whether you're using just pieces of styles, whether you're using graphics, the clip art, whether you're using the themes. You'll notice once you click and pick one, as soon as you open that gallery back up, you can mouse over and have a live preview of the change without having to go back and forth in the document. Boy, do 